welcome. This is Rain Smith, and you are watching the New Africa Channel. The question that my generation poses are the following, if I can resume it, is to not understand how Africa has so many riches on our soil, with a nature generous, with water, with sun, in abundance. L'Afrique est aujourd'hui le continent le plus pauvre. L'Afrique est un continent affamé. Et comment se fait-il que les chefs d'État traversent donc le monde à mendier Voici des questions que nous nous posons et que nous n'avons pas de réponse jusque-là. Nous avons l'occasion de tisser de nouvelles relations. Et j'espère que ces relations puissent être les meilleures pour donner un meilleur avenir à nos peuples. Shalom everyone, if you're new to my station, I am the Hebrew widow, the Hebrew Rose of Jericho, coming at you with some judgment news. All praises to the almighty, sublime, most magical one, the creator of all things, and the master of the day of judgment, our father, hallelujah, and to our most beautiful mother, Mari Hala, the Holy Spirit, aka the Ruach Kadash. We adore you, Mother. We love you, and we ask you for wisdom in this message. Shalom to all of my brothers and sisters out there of the Star Seed United. I send you infinite love and light. And I receive yours, all of our friends and allies of the Star Seed United. I send you my blessings, love and light as well. Yes, today we're going to be talking about Niger and what Niger means. Yes, in these days of the Great Reset. You see where Niger is right here? I'm going to show you something very magical. Okay, so we have Uriel, the archangel over Eden. You can see his face. He even has a tear coming from his eyes. His eye, you, you see his eyelashes, his nose, his lips. Look like he has dimples going on. He has a badge of honor on his, his collar. He's wearing a beautiful cape that sweeps all the way back into Asia. You see that? You see how his cape sweeps back? And here is his right wing, his left wing, crossing over the Red Sea, all the way down to his feet. Yes, you can even see his toes. His toes are countries. Yeah, his feet are countries. Yes, this is a great archangel. You see him now? He's been hiding in plain sight. His beautiful white locks. You see his white hair? Yes. And right here is the Niger. So now I showed you his wings, his feet. This country, Niger, is the right fist of Uriel. He, this is the fish. You can see his knuckles. Yes. <laughs> This is the mighty fist, honey. The mighty fist. And look what's coming out of Niger. The great reset. Oh, we. Another big, big reset. Hallelujah. So we're going to go over what's happening in Niger today. But I just wanted you to see their position on the angel Uriel's body. Before I get started, I just wanted to thank everyone for your kind support of this station. Yeah, and your gifts of love. They're very appreciated. Thank you so very much. And hitting that like button and your comments. Yes, all of this is energy. All of it is energy. And I salute you for putting your energy with mine. Going into the courts of the Most High. Yes, where it's been very effective. Our fight is on those battlegrounds in the court of the Most High. In Niger, we see something else rising up. You see how the Most High is putting everything in action? Oh my goodness. 
this will affect the whole world. This is a great component of the Great Reset. And we see where Niger situated. Yes, on Uriel's fist. Isn't that magical? Come on, you guys. If you see that fist, put I see the fist in the comment section. <laughs> I told you guys. I told you the most high is most magical. Yes, he manifested everything. All of his plans are manifested all over this, this earth. And it's nothing anybody can do to stop it. We were under those curses for 400 years. Yeah, we were told. Yeah, not only were we told in Deuteronomy 28 what would happen if we were on the Most High side or if we turned our backs, but the Most High already knew what was going to happen because he manifested it in Genesis when he was speaking to our father Abraham about our 400 years of captivity in the 15th chapter. Yeah, he, he said that we were, we were going to be in a land that was not ours. It was not ours. And that we would serve under captivity for 400 years. But afterward, yeah, we're in the afterward. Now we're going into the afterward. We're right on that line, y'all. <laughs> we're right on the line. We're about to jump the broom in a minute. I'm telling you, Judgment News is getting more magical and more exciting every single day. C'est de ne pas comprendre comment l'Afrique avec tant de richesses sur notre sol, avec une nature généreuse, de l'eau, du soleil, en abondance, l'Afrique est aujourd'hui le continent le plus pauvre. Hello everyone. From one of our future kings, yeah, Starcy Jackson, my great grandson. <laughs> I want him to get in practice of letting his voice be heard, yes. Okay, so we're going to break down this speech from President Ibrahim, from Burkina Faso. That's who he's president over. And he's 35 years old. He's the youngest king in Africa. I said king. Yes, he is a king. They call him president, but he's the king of his region, okay? Very powerful. Oh, and look at that melanin. Ooh, just like our Messiah, yeah, our big brother. And look at his face. Oh my goodness, when I saw this for the first time, I said, look at that fierceness. Look at that power. And then I heard his voice. And I resonated with his words. And look how he has everyone's undivided attention. Oh my goodness, he has that trait just like our Messiah had in his earth experience. Yes, honey. He could stand on the seashore or, or on a boat and speak to everyone on the seashore and they can hear him. They can hear him from I don't know how many, how many hundreds of yards away because his words were powerful. And believe me, what King Ibrahim, I say King, I'm going to call him King. King Ibrahim is saying has resounded throughout this entire earth his voice is heard by those even in power in the most powerful positions and believe me he got the colonizers shaking in their boots honey it's so very powerful and it's going to change this world what they did what they did and niger is a Click on the combination of that lock of the Great Reset. I'm telling you. Yeah, that little tumbler click. Yes, this is one of them. So the first thing he says is, the questions that my generation, my generation, first thing I thought about was Joshua. Joshua. All the old heads had to die out before they went into the promised land. All praises to the Most High. He's having mercy on us seniors that are awake. <laughs> because it looks like we're going to be crossing over into the promised land. Hallelujah. Maybe because our spirits are young. I don't know. But he addresses the thought patterns of his generation. The younger generation. And I can see that mindset because 
in our generation, we were asleep. And so we talked about what was going on. We complained about what was going on. We preached about what was going on. We did warfare and what was going on. Yes, another kind of warfare, 3D warfare, I would say, because we were usually when we did warfare back then, it was something concerning this 3D matrix. Yeah, now we like Star CG9 and we're praying for our kingdom, not only worldwide, but our kingdom as a whole, the entire kingdom of love and light. We have joined forces. Hallelujah. All praises to the most high. So in this generation, they don't just talk about it. They don't deal with uh they don't deal with serpent seed, the colonizers. They don't deal with them the way that we dealt with them. See, when we dealt with them, we dealt in on on their territories of those laws, which I explained that has nothing to do with right and wrong, righteousness and unrighteousness. It has everything to do with serpent seeds, sitting in power seats, making rules, and then backing them with enforcement. That's why all of these unjust laws are getting passed now. They're called laws. Yeah. Some of them bills, but they make some of those bills laws. And once it becomes a law, a rule of law, then they have the power to enforce it. Well, see, he knows that. So he said, there, system, we not coming in like that. We need to go in on our territory. What we need to do is go in on our territory with our might and not cooperate with their unjust laws and their colonization with their unjust rules to keep our people in poverty. Yeah, while they just rob all the resources and send them back to their countries and provide jobs for their people who live a life of, you know, maybe not luxury, but comfort. While our people are living in poverty, I found that some of these places don't even have electricity, but yet they're rich in gold and diamonds and cobalt and water and the sun the solar power but they don't have electricity that's what the colonizers do yes let's review what the colonizers say about this the most powerful strategy in warfare is know thy enemy so we're going to go to this lecture that was given in 2015 explaining the game that they have played on us worldwide for 400 years. Africa historically, Sub-Saharan Africa has been fundamental to the global prosperity of the advanced countries. Okay? And Africa had a role to play. It has a role as a raw material producer. We will not allow Sub-Saharan Africa to escape that. Okay, we do everything to keep Sub-Saharan Africa where it is, also impoverished. It's absolutely vital for the prosperity of everyone else. So let's get clear about that. Okay, and this means all the economic structures, all the global institutions, and the economics we teach everyone is all designed to keep Africa exactly where it is. And whether it is Europe or US or now China, it's always the same. We need Africa to be impoverished because we need those raw materials and we need them dirt cheap. Okay, so that's the message. It doesn't mean to say that there's nothing Africans can do. Of course there is. That's the message. It doesn't mean to say that there's nothing Africans can do. Of course there is. Of course there is. Okay, but this is the opposition that they're fighting. This is what it's about. Because if Africa does do something different, I assure you living standards of all those in Europe and North America and Asia is going to fall. If Africa does do something different, I assure you living standards of all those in Europe and North America and Asia is going to fall. Okay? And that is a big price to pay. I assure you that the West is not going to allow that without a big fight. Okay, so this is what it's fundamentally about. Uh, what I want to show you is how these structures are operating. Uh, what I want to show you is how these structures are operating. It's just 20 minutes, so we can't do very much, but just to give you a little bit of an idea. And why I keep the ideology part there is because we are part of the producers of ideology. Because we are part of the producers of ideology. Because we are part of the producers of ideology. 
at universities and academic institutions, we are complicit in this whole enterprise. Okay, so the job of many Western academics is to convince Africans they have to keep doing what they're doing. Okay, and to show them it's your fault that you're poor, it's not our fault. And to show them it's your fault that you're poor, it's not our fault, it's your fault that you're poor. You know, so this is what we do in academic institutions, and I, I want to show that as well. To start, this is what it's basically about, so you, you know what it's about. But I want to just show you the extent to which Africa is specializing in the production of raw materials and basic agricultural goods. And we know the basic forces that have caused this underdevelopment. We know it's colonization, we know it's colonization, we know it's colonization. We know the vast resources coming from there, but look at the bottom line in terms of global trade value. Look at that. 0.5%, percent going down to 0.1, to 0.1, meaning that with all these vast resources being produced, how much are they getting for it? Nothing, nothing. This is a very significant piece of data. Then I just want to show you what has happened to Sub-Saharan Africa, because what we know, what we know, and from all studies, no country ever develops without manufacturing. Okay, producing raw materials will not take you anywhere. Producing basic agricultural goods will not take you anywhere. And let's have a look at how much manufacturing activity takes place in Sub-Saharan Africa. We can look over the last 15 odd years, 15, 20 years. And we see manufacturing has actually declined as a percentage of the total. This is percentages of total production in Sub-Saharan Africa. How much of it is accounted for by manufacturing? So this figure here is 17% of the total. Most of the rest, when we talk of industry, it includes manufacturing, but the bulk of it is mining, okay? Raw material extraction. And it looks like our kings in Africa know their tricks. And they're like, you're not playing that game on us anymore, bullies, because we are fighting back. Yes, the mighty fists of Niger. Ooh, we honey, they are in trouble. And they're warning them, we're not playing on your turf of laws and rules and colonization anymore. We are coming with our mighty fist against you and we dare you, we dare you to come and do something about it. If you send somebody in and oh, we see where it's located, the mighty fist, honey, no telling what would happen. They probably won't even have to fight. I've shown you guys so many magical things on the continent. Yes. Ooh, we. Anyway, did you guys hear that colonizer? This is what they teach their posterity. This is the game that they have been playing on us. To industrialize and start producing manufacturers. Okay, so we will do everything to stop that. And I'm going to show you how we actually block that. It's obvious in certain ways, but it's less obvious in other ways. Now, we have actually seen periods of rapid growth in Sub-Saharan Africa, misleading people, saying, oh, you know, we're now doing much better. And this has happened recently. Recently, I've had students come and tell me, we've done much better now. So he goes on to say for a short period of time, yeah, we have economic growth and then it takes a dive. So and basically they give you a little something temporarily and then you make a decline again. You're back in poverty and then they can control you again. It's the same thing with the protest. It's the same thing with voting for people. It's all the same. It's like when we get all upset and the people rise up, they'll give us a little bit of something to quiet us down. And then it, it, it just vanishes away and we're back in, in a worse position than we were before. And so now we have some warriors that are in the know. They know all of these tricks of the enemy now. The world knows the trick of the enemy. Now maybe you have learned something. I suggest that you go and listen to this lecture in entirety. I don't know who was recording this, but he's a professor. And this is how they teach their posterity so they can hang on to the blessing, but it's exposed now. 
I am sure there's going to be a part two, three, four, five of what's going here in Judgment News. Yes, because the Most High wants us to see what he is doing. Yes, he is turning this world upside down. Do you guys remember when we were praying uh, with, when, uh, when we went to the courts of the Most High about Elon Musk trying to hire witches? And we prayed that there are all of their magic that they used against us will come to naught. And their money magic don't work on us anymore. This is huge. This is huge, y'all. Hallelujah. Let's go to the courts of the Most High. All praises to our Almighty Father, the Master of the Day of Judgment. Hallelujah. All glory and praise to you, Father. And to our most beautiful mother, Mari Holla, thank you so much, mother, for this wisdom and how to fight back. Not on their territory of laws and bills and, and their shenanigans, but on our territory that was given to us. The courts of the Most High. Hallelujah. Yes, thank you, Father. And we pledge our allegiance. To our Messiah, the King and the God of this earth, the Son of the Almighty One and Mari Hala, hallelujah, who's riding upon this earth. And may the force be with our star seed in Niger. Yes, hallelujah, may the force be with them. Anyone coming against them, Father, we ask that they don't even step foot on the territory before your mighty host go after them. Don't let one of them lose their lives. Not one of our brothers, not one of our kings. Hallelujah. Well, Father, we already know you got that covered, but you know we like to talk to you and let you know what we want anyway. <laughs> we see what's going on, Father. You are turning this world upside down, and there's nothing in the world that anyone can do about it. Hallelujah. We see where you're rising up your star seed and putting them in position. Your 144,000 worldwide, Father, you're bringing unity to our people in their awakening. Yes, Father, I ask that you send a spirit of unity here in the United States between our brothers, our brothers, our gang banging brothers. Let them unite together. Let them drop all of the nonsense and recognize the construct and the systems and the ideology that was implanted into our culture and let them unite as one, Father. Hallelujah. Oh, I see so much magic going on here, Father. Yes, thank you so much for great victories. Father, I'm coming to you with the man that was the one to make me recognize Uriel's fist. A man, a local man in my neighborhood who lost all of his fingers in a snowstorm, the last snowstorm. He had to get all of his fingers amputated. And my soul just was so sorrowful for him, Father. Cause now he's on the streets begging, begging for help using his charm to try to survive in this matrix because no doubt he was caught up in this system of poverty where his insurance wouldn't even give him the proper prosthetics to function in his life. We ask you to bless that brother and bring him out of poverty and all of those who suffer poverty and are put in those positions of helplessness. We ask you to send them supernatural help and resources, Father. Hallelujah. Starseed United, you know what to do. Put those sevens in the comment section and say, Quam Yashavala, hallelujah. Yes, because the Most High is turning this world upside down. And it's nothing, nothing at all that Serpent Seed could do about it. Hallelujah. May all Starseed unite. May we all be connected to this 5D realm. Hallelujah. That's what I have for you today, Star Seed United. And I salute you for joining me in this great battle. Hallelujah. Isn't this good news? Isn't this good news? Hallelujah. Yes, we're getting closer and closer. All praises to the Most High. 
Thank you so much for watching. Thank you for your support of this station. If you have not subscribed to my station and you resonate with this message, hit that subscribe button and activate your notification bell because there's judgment news coming back to back right now. Judgments have been accelerated and so have this great reset. Thank you so much for watching. Don't forget to like, subscribe, and share all of this good news. Doesn't it feel good to fight back? We are so victorious. All praises to the Most High. This is a game changer, Star CG9. Star CG9 forever, yeah. And thank you for your support of the station and all your gifts of love. May the Most High multiply them for whatever your heart's desire. Times 100. Abracadabra. Yeah, okay, you guys. Until the next magical show. Your big sister, the Hebrew Rose of Jericho, out. Shalom. Wow.